So now children, for today, that the topic which we are going to discuss is called Hooke's Law. So before going to Hooke's Law, again, I want to tell you that in the previous topic, we have seen from the kinematic children that if you apply or exert a force on any object, then due to the effect of the force, object can move in a linear motion. Rectilinear path is pos possible, one dimensional motion is possible. Then in the chapter, in the topic of movement of force, we have seen if that force is applied in such a way that is perpendicular to the, perpendicular to the, from the axis of rotation, then that force can make the object to rotate. Now for today's topic, that is the Hooke's law here. Uh, now look, one, other, one diagram that I'm going to draw on this board children. If I take a spring, suppose this is a, a rigid support, rigid support, and uh, on this support, I have hanged a spring. So you have to draw a spring. So this is a spring. And this spring is carrying no force without applying any force means uh, we can say no weight is there. No weight is here, no force is there on this spring in the beginning. But now children, in step by step, I increase the force on this spring, then you know what happens, that the natural tendency of a spring is that due to the applied force, there will be a certain change in length, means extension will produce in this spring. Suppose in the second situation, the same spring from the same support, but I have applied a force of certain force, and that force I can consider, suppose one Newton, if you can see, one Newton. It can be one Newton children, it can be half Newton, it can be two Newton. Means you have applied a weight, some weight you have applied. Due to this one Newton force, you can see, suppose I can measure, suppose this, the length of the spring, if I take uh, this length here, Okay, suppose I will take, this is the five cent, okay, this, this one. And from here, from this point, and from to the bottom one, to the, at the center of those, okay. And if I measure this length, children, and this is around to be, four centimeters. This is the observation children. If you perform this experiment in laboratory also, you will find. So how much extension is there? What is the length? The length increased of the spring, it is four centimeters. Children. Are you getting my point children, what I'm saying here? Due to the force applied, there is an extension in the spring. If I increase in, in the third case, the same spring, and, but now, now the force is Q Newton instead of, force is two Newton. There is further extension. And now the total extension here is the initial position. And this one, I can consider, I will take, if I measure it with the help of scales. So this is something eight centimeter. This can be in millimeter children it can be in centimeter, okay? Extension is there. If you put another weight, another log, then you will find further extension is there. And if I make 
a table, an observation table. And what is that table, children? Look here. The table is between force applied in Newton and uh, the second is the extension produced in the wire. So I can make a table, children, here. What is that table? When the force is in one Newton, suppose the extension is four centimeter, this extension is in centimeter. Force is two Newton, extension is eight. Force is three Newton, extension is 12. And like when the force is four Newton, then the extension is 16 centimeter. This happening here. And from this table, you can plot a graph also, children. And uh, now let me draw a graph, children. So if I have to draw a graph between, between what? Between force and weight applied. So what will be the graph? Directly proportional and a positive relationship. Yes, very good. So if you see along x axis, I will take force in Newton, or this force is also that you can like load applied, weight applied. And along the y axis, I will take what? Extension. For the extension, I can write here. Extension produced in a y in the spring. This is extension. This extension can be in centimeter, can be in meter. Meter, I think meter, meter is very difficult. <laughs> extension produced in meter. But uh, whatever the extension is there. So let me take this in centimeter. As per this table, if I plot a graph, so then I will get a straight line. I will get a straight line children. If you plot this point on this graph, children, you will get a straight line passing through the horizon. And if we are getting a straight line, children, from this, I can conclude and I can give you a relation between force and extension. And that is force is directly proportional to extension produced. So extension produced, I will write letter x children. f is proportional to direct proportional to extension produced it means more you apply the force on an object in a spring and in a string more extension will be there in a wire if you replace this proportional sign then we will get a constant that constant I will write with the letter k, small k, multiplied by x, f is equal to k into x. What is this k here? This k is called a constant. It is a constant and which is called spring constant actually. Spring constant. And this spring constant you can find this is equal to F divided by X. This spring constant is given by force per unit extension or force per unit length extended. K is equal to, that is the spring constant. If you find out the value every time, if you have to find from this table, F divided by X, one by four, 1 by 4, 2 by 8, 1 by 4 again, 3 by 4, again 1 by 4, that the constant is com coming out same. This value of k is constant. And the unit of k, unit of k, remember k is here spin constant. This will be Newton per meter, Newton per centimeter, Newton per millimeter, depending upon what length is given, okay? Centimeter, meter, millimeter. In SI system, unit of K is Newton divided by meter or Newton meter inverse, meter inverse. 
Now this expression, children, this expression f direct proportional to x, this is called our Hooke's law that are heading and topic Hooke's law. F direct proportional to x is called Hooke's law. So I want to write here this expression. This expression is for Hooke's law, given by a scientist Hooke, who has given us the information that a relation between force and extension. Now, children, here while we are talking about this law, Hooke's law, that stress is direct proportion to strain means that if you apply a force on an object on a wire on a spring extension will be there this concept is highly highly used during when uh, civil engineers when they have to construct a building or a, or a flyover so on that time we have to keep this law into mind that force is direct proportional to x means suppose we are on a flyover the vehicles are moving the cars bus scooters trucks are passing through the to through this uh, flyover so all these moving objects they exert a force on the pillars on the on the uh, flyover itself children and due to that there are a tendency what uh, extension produced means that the uh, this bridge or flyover may sink, may, it may move or extend downward, but up to a certain point. Children. Now, let me complete this hook slow. Now, children, again, come back to the same uh, spring situation. Sorry, I have to take force along x axis and the extension along y axis. Now, children, if you keep adding and adding and adding the weight with that spring, that what will happen? What are the possible possible cases now? If you are keep adding adding some weight, yeah, please someone who's speaking. Eventually, the spring will break. Like no, uh, eventually the spring will uh, like uh, it won't uh, go back to its original form. Yeah, good, very good point. Anyone else? It will break. It will break. Yeah, it will break. There is a possibility that the spring may break. Hmm. I'll stop stretching because the length of this um, spring has reached its final point. Hmm. Okay, good. Now, children, let me draw uh, one more graph. And the graph is like uh, something like something like this. Now, here in this graph, if you observe carefully up to this point, the line is complete straight. When you find the line is straight, so up to this point, let me write this point is P, Hooke's law is valid. Means O to P, from point O to P, or up to point P, Hooke's law is valid. Hooke's law is valid means children, that force is direct proportional to the extension. If you exert a force, if you apply a force, there will be extension. But now, after the point P, let me take another point. Suppose this is our another point X point. This X point after point P, if you observe this curve, this graph carefully, then you will find this is not a straight line. This is not a straight line. This is a curve. This is a curve. And on this curve, somewhere near to the point P, I have put a point X near to near to what children near to a point p where hook's law is valid the point is x now at this point x here if you release the weight all the weights that you have applied still the spring will retain its original position means if i have a spring in my hand children if i stretch and stretch and stretch and i reach to the point x if I release the force, still the spring will regain its original position. It can return back to the final position. So this point X, there is a name to this point. And what is the name given in your book, children? This is called elastic limit. 
this point x is called elastic limit what do you mean by elastic limit children elastic limit is a point to where if you release all the forces acting on a spring on a wire on a on a on a bridge then still that the body wire string spring will regain its original position back but but after point x okay I, I forgot to tell you that from point p to x this curve what do you mean by this curve line why there is not a straight line why there is not a straight line children the curve means now after point p when you add another weight on the spring extension is there extension is there children still the spring is extending its length has been increased but it is not direct proportional with the force as the table which we have drawn when the last force which was the last force, children uh, maybe as per your textbook children if you see the data if you see the data here uh, when the load is 4 newton there the extension is 40 millimeter and when the 5 newton force is applied there is the extension it is not 50 it is 58 as here in your textbook children that shows now the force no longer here the hooke's law is not valid but extension is there children now if you add another weight six newton weight you apply on the spring now the extension will be there now instead of 58 68 it may be 98 it may be 100 large extension compared to the force applied and then there will be a case a possible case that if we apply so much force on the spring that we can reach to the breaking point and finally somewhere at this point that we consider at at this point that is called the breaking point the spring will break you keep increasing increasing and increasing or by uh, the applied force or stage will come that the spring will break so children remember after x point if you exert or applied a force or applied a weight then spring will not return back to its permanent original position and a permanent deformity is occurred in the spring a permanent means the body is called deformed body a deformed body children so this is children something about uh, the hook slow that i have discussed with you and uh, now is there any doubt children from this topic anything you want to discuss with me sir yes please sir at that curve in the graph uh, it's where the hook law is not valid right hook's law is valid up to point p hook's law is valid whenever you find the line is straight straight line on the oh. curve on the curve hook's law is not valid okay means after point p here hook's law is not valid but but one thing that you have to remember near to the point p means near to the what is this point p here in the book this is mentioned this is called the limit of proportionality let me write it limit here let me write limit of p r o p o r t i o n e l i t y proportionality limit of proportionality that is the hooke's law f is proportional to weight applied but after point p Hooke's law is not valid, not applicable, but remember, but till x point, till point x, if you release all of it, still the spring is able to regain its original position. You know the original position of the spring that the spring we have drawn in the beginning, like this. If you re remove all the weight, then the spring will return back to its original length. But 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 if you reach to the breaking limit or beyond x, then and uh, after point x, if you remove all the weight, then this string will not return back to its original position. Suppose the original length of the spring is l centimeter. Now it will not be l centimeter, but it will be l dash l prime centimeter. That will shows a permanent deformity has occurred in the body. 
So this concept, children, that the, the civil engineers, that the engineers they use while constructing the buildings, uh, dam, or this flyovers, bridges, hanging bridge, all these things that uh, whatever, they have to look the elastic limit of the body, how much uh, load that the bridge can bear before it can sink into the land. They have to find out that limit.